going on guys this is max welcome back to the channel i know a lot of you must be eagerly awaiting your enduro growler slash pint orders i wanted to give my initial impressions and feedback of this prototype tire and see if this is the right tire for you just look at that trip pattern so iconic now i gotta say when jeff sent this out to me really had no major complaint at all the biggest thing that i noticed especially after riding on trails is that the sidewalls shoulder area could have been a little rounder by a few millimeters just for that extra carviness but it really wasn't like anything that was major so already relay feedback to Jeff and he already knew about that so on the final version that you guys are gonna be getting it's gonna be even better so stoked for you guys I love this tire I'll give you a complete breakdown of my thoughts it's gonna be three categories actually it'll be street riding some drops then we'll be doing some spins and slides in the trick department and then we'll top it off with some trail shredding hope you guys enjoy drop some comments questions and i will do my best to get back at you as most of you guys know i've been really focused on the best life for the past six months or so and just really loving the journey it's reignited my one wheel passion all over again but it's essentially made me uncomfortable writing a future motion board because my muscle memory is completely accustomed to the, the VESC algorithm but it didn't take too long to transition back over the biggest thing I notice is that it, future motion programming is a lot more tail heavy so I was tail dragging a lot but made a quick adjustment and uh, I was kind of back rocking on it. Hands down prefer the, the best feel. Just takes some time to get used to. Just wanted to give that background uh, as we see me riding this future motion growler board. But anyway, yeah, back to the tire. Landed into a complete crater. Now comparing this tire to a full size enduro tire of an XR or GT, there's a slight shift in muscle memory of how hard you carve, where's that kind of tipping point on the edge. You don't have to do as much with this tire. It's almost effortless. What I wanted to do is just get a feel of it, the cushioning on drops, stability, carviness, agility. It is a very responsive tire. Super agile, yet still stable at speed and then also on balance lines. It, once you find your line and your zone, it is like a scalpel. It feels amazing. You can really rip hard into those sharp carves and turns. <laughs> I'm rocking this new Nobleman TK02 helmet and I am just loving it. So I'm going to be doing a full review on the helmet as well, so keep an eye out for that. Oh, these bikers were getting ready for their session <laughs> and watching me attempt this pop over to drop. And, uh, yeah, the guy was like rooting me on. So I was like, shoot, I better, better land this in front of them. Show them what the one wheel can do. This tire feels amazing on nudges and drops. Despite the slightly less clearance that you get with the smaller tire, I think that's made up for with the extra torque that you get from the smaller tire 
and also just the tackiness of the enduro it's just such a great compound this is the only one wheel tire that's first of all custom made but also the treads are so deep and far down the shoulders of the tire that it really gives you the extra grip when you're doing hard turns especially on berms or when you're um, carving doing switchbacks so it really gives you the extra traction but it has that perfect blend of slick and tread the best darn hybrid tire for one wheel that you can get but how does it stack up for only tricks it depends if you're trying to do spins on pavement it's a little bit more of a challenge because of that tackiness and the tread grip so if you're getting the enduro only for doing tricks it's probably not the best option i think a slick a full slick would be better but all things considered it does hold its own you figure out how to adjust your muscle memory and you can make it work The thing about this enduro pint growler size is it's a little smaller so it's not going to touch the ground as quick so you have to time it just right where when you're exiting the slide the tire can grip the ground otherwise the tail is going to just hit the ground. All in all it's sliding really well um, especially when you wax the curb and you get some of that wax on the tire as well it starts to really get heated up more slick and buttery three sixty reverts were so fun the rounder profile makes it much more snappy and effortless <laughs> all right the best part you've been waiting for trail riding so I took this down to Santa Cruz to ride with some of the wheel slip squad. Shout out to Sean for putting on the tire, by the way. Also Jacob and Alex for always good company on these beautiful trails. So this is where the Enduro really shines. Putting the shoulders and sidewalls to test. This is what the Enduro was designed for. When the XR Enduro first came out, I was curious why it was wider by half an inch. It didn't feel as carby initially. Hit up Jeff, and I asked him, what was the rationale to make it wider at 6.5? Stability, I'm guessing? He says, quote, yep, that along with the sidewall design and shoulder profile increases edge hold by creating a larger contact patch on the turns. No more wobbles on fast, heavy turns. The Enduro is built foremost for smashing down chunky trails fast as balls and also handles super comfortable on the street and quiet underfoot. With the wrong compound and shape, it's the worst. But with the right compound, it's the perfect edge feature. <laughs> <laughs> so up until this point, I haven't really sent it for a few weeks, so I was a bit out of my element, as you can tell. And also that along with writing future motion programming, I was very rusty. And like I said earlier, it tended to be tail heavy. So I had to get used to it again, make some adjustments, finally stuck it, but still pretty tail draggy. You didn't know about the nose drag line. As you can tell, the Enduro just eats up the bumps and chunks and gives me good pop on the bonks. I have my PSI at anywhere between 18 to 19. I weigh about 1 
185, sometimes pushing it closer to 190. But I like the extra pop on Bonk, so I'll go higher on the PSI. It feels like a very, very stable yet agile thrasher board. If you want to rip a growler on trails, do some tricks, this is the best hybrid tire to go for. Yo! Final thoughts, this is my favorite hybrid tire for the one door. Especially on a growler or pint, it's gonna be extra responsive, but also super stable when you just wanna beeline and go for speed. But I would say this is the best experience when you're not concerned about racing or high speed. You just really wanna enjoy the ride on the lower end of the speed spectrum. I mean, I got up to the light 20s, but it just felt way more alive and thrilling when you don't wanna have pressure of a race environment. The only con that I mentioned earlier is that it's not the best for only tricking, if that's what you're into, but that's not what this tire is meant for. And that's it. Snag this tire, you're gonna absolutely love it what I've been waiting for, for the Growler. And I think it's shipping now on thefloatlife.com. So thank you guys for tuning in. Drop a comment, let me know what else you guys want to see. Got some more review videos and best performance tests coming your way. So stay tuned, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next video. Hey!